All right, hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to the roller coaster. Welcome to Talk Investing. I'm Tom. Hello, George. How you doing, George? Great. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing good. It was a uh, emotional roller coaster today, and we had a roll reversal between Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So, all kinds of stuff to go through today. We got some press releases we got a court case that got finalized we got bitcoin up down up down we had a we had one of the bitcoin miners have uh an upgrade from uh from one of the investment companies and it went ballistic on that upgrade which surprised me so we're gonna go we got a lot to go through today hopefully you guys had a good day overall when I woke up first thing this morning, I'm on the East Coast in the U.S. here, so early this morning, things looked very ugly. But we rallied all day, other than the last hour. So we rallied, we peaked about an hour ago, we had a big pullback, but even still, all the way down to the bottom of that, from the bottom early this morning, we were still up 3.5% at the worst, and at the best, you know, an hour earlier, we were up 7.7%. All of that still, uh, well, actually, we got past, this is where we were yesterday when the markets closed. So we were at 69,260. So we seemed hopelessly under 69,000 today. And then we had these two 15-minute, oh, I got to show you, I got to put the screen up. We had these two 15-minute candles, and, you know, all of a sudden, boom, we were over, not only over 69,000, but we were over 70,000. And we've kind of reversed back, and now we're back down to 68. But we did get down to a low of, you know, around 66,500 here earlier today. So we were all over the place, I guess is my point. Uh, meanwhile, if I could ask everybody to do us a giant favor, please smash the like button. Uh, it helps the stream out in real time, and which helps the channel out a lot. We have been growing lately, so much appreciation to everybody who has been joining us. We have 23 likes. We're going for 500 likes, so do us a giant favor. What? Wow. What are you, crazy? What? You going for all those likes? We've got we've got at least 500 <laughs> likes on every live stream for the last couple I know, of months. I know. I'm just being funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank everybody. We had our... I believe our first video in history that got a thousand likes this wow. week. So that was an all time record. So thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll smash the like if you make me rich. Well, I you gotta can't. make yourself rich. That's that's right. Everybody everybody's gotta do their own investing. All we can do is talk about it. Yep. And there's some good days and there's some bad days. And depending on what you held, I, you know, a lot of these days have been a little bit of each because Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners have not been necessarily doing the same things. We're going to see, we're going to talk about today. Was today at long last, after basically three months, are the Bitcoin miners, was this the turnaround? Are we back was on Was today track? the day? In fact. What was the volume like? Good question. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to put a poll up, and then we'll look at that. I think they said, we can't take the abuse anymore. Let's not sell, sell our stock today. That's what I think happened. We'll just go yes or no. So, was today the bottom for the Bitcoin miners? In other words, across the board... All of the Bitcoin miners on my list, which are 19, they were all green today. We have had, these days have been very few and very far between, basically for the last 12 weeks. And what is more interesting is this happened on a day where Bitcoin, you know, for a lot of the day, you know, other than to, until right before the market closed, Bitcoin was down all day long. At certain points of the day, it was way down. But the Bitcoin miners seemed to be rallying and and if it did feel like they were maybe turning the corner i i will say you know we've had one or two of these days along the way so you know i don't want to jump the gun
but it's always nice to see the potential that maybe we are turning the corner. The last time this happened to us, we've talked about this a lot on the channel. In 2023, there was a 14 week period where Bitcoin, where the Bitcoin miners just drastically anywhere from 40 to 70 percent underperformed Bitcoin itself. So we are now, you know, 11 or 12 weeks into the exact same thing happening again. The, the only difference is last year was in the middle of the year. So we were already way up when that happened, and it was a little easier to stomach. This year, it's been right from day one. The Bitcoin miners, with the exception of, I think, CleanSpark, all the Bitcoin miners are still down year to date in the year 2024. Now, they all had giant up years in 2023, and they all had horrendous down years in the year 2022. So it's been a roller coaster. And today was no different. Today was its own roller coaster, especially, you know, if you're looking at this 15 minute chart for Bitcoin, I mean, this is all one day here. So, you know, this, this was a wild, wild ride. Midway, thank you for the super chat and thank you for being a member. Midway said, uh, Cypher held $3.04 for three days in a row and put in a higher low today at $3.09 and ended the week green. What are your thoughts on Cypher's daily chart? So we'll take a look at the daily chart. And Cypher is, I Cypher's, I don't have a position in Cypher. I'll just tell everybody that. But I do think they're one of, you know, I think I have them number six overall, but I think they're going to be one of the winners, and they articulated right. a little bit more of their growth plan uh, recently. I think I have, uh, I think I have their pres investor presentation up. We can get to that as well. But they've got some good growth plans. They have a low cost per coin. I like what they're doing. I think they have good things. Let's just take a look at their one day chart quickly. So, yeah, you can see, I mean, they never, they didn't really, there are charts that look a lot worse than this. Now, that, that's kind of a, not exactly a compliment, I guess. So, if we look at this, from $3.53, back on December 27th, and again, almost every single Bitcoin miner hit their high for the last two or three years on December 27th of 2023. So Cypher was no different. So it's still another 58% they have to move to the upside to get back to that high. So there is a lot of room to the upside. And again, I think this is one of the stocks that, or I shouldn't say stocks. I think this is one of the companies that's, I think will be one of the winners. So this, I, I always have to let everybody know this is not financial advice, right? We are not financial advisors. We just, you know, we get on here. We talk about what what we think. And obviously, we talk about Bitcoin. We talk about the Bitcoin miners. Uh, you know, that's our main focus. We do talk about some other things, and there is some other stuff going on. And if I could ask everybody to please smash the like button. We're up to 65 likes, but we're going for 500. So today was a wild day. The stream needs all the help it can get. So if you are willing, do us a favor. Did you finally listen to the uh, call for core? I listened to the core call. I went through their investor presentation. I still haven't asleep? finished their 10K. You know, their 10K was like 260 pages or something to that effect. Oh, and wow. It just went on and on and on. And well, I did they... get through a lot of it. And they, they popped 12 percent today. That's why I'm asking. They did. They had a great day today. They didn't have a good day yesterday. And, and I'm following a couple other things that I'll show you guys. They have two different warrants. I'm a lot more interested in their warrants than um, than maybe their stock. And I was a lot more interested yesterday before they popped than today. But obviously no one day is it makes the difference. But it's a, they have a very complicated situation going on. I still think we're going through a lot of uh, period of time where investors are trying to decide what all of this means. It was a massive amount to digest. I'm going to show you the one thing out of 
all of the information that they provided, and there's there's they have so much going on um, between the amount of you know when they came out of bankruptcy, everybody got some stock and they got two different warrants, and and so ultimately, if and when all those warrants are exercised, you know you have to consider the fully diluted. So a lot of people look at it and go, well, their their market cap is very very low. It's a steal, but try to remember. You know, you got to look at their fully diluted market cap in this instance with the massive amount of warrants that they have out there in excess of the number of shares of stock that they have. So now the the stock has to perform well for those warrants to get to the point where they're going to be exercised. One's in the six dollars and change. One's at eight dollars and change. So. But I do think it will. I do think Cypher will get to that point. I do think all those warrants will get exercised and, and and i'm going to show you one that i think i don't own but i think there's the poss i'm really looking at it as very it's on my watch list i think it could be a good possibility kevin k so so was the end of so was this the end of the bull run what should we talk about for the next three years kevin k i do not believe this was the end of the bull run by any stretch of the imagination, I think this bull run is so far out ahead. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. We're, we're, everybody's been so exuberant and, you know, I, I'm not even going to exclude myself from that. We've all been looking at, you know, the amazing things that Bitcoin does once it reaches its previous all-time high. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. And, you know, so a- expectations have been set through the roof. So I want to talk about expectations and and maybe dial it a little bit down to reality even though i remain i remain extremely bullish for 2024 and 2025 having said that i mean the run we've had up is just remarkable barry barry has thank you barry barry has been a member for 18 months barry said kevin k n f L, which must mean something, but since I'm old, I don't know what it means. National Football League. I, Not financial well, luckiness. <laughs> <laughs> Probably they know what it means. Sour Melon Gaming said, you mean cores, not cypher. Wow. Really? Marathon has mined zero oh, DTC did... in the last 24 hours? I can check their list. I didn't see. I I did. If if George asked me about, did I get through the cipher? Yes, I was talking about Core Scientific as far as their yeah yeah that's what I meant Core yeah yeah Core. And so yeah, uh, everything that I was talking about there and the warrants, that's all Core Scientific. If I said cipher, then that was an accident. Clean Spark to one hundred. Thank you for being a member and thanks for the super chat. As of this morning, Marathon had mined zero Bitcoin. This is what George was just talking about in the last 24 hours. March pr- production, as of today, Mara, wow. 416. Clean Spark, 403. Whoa. Oh, the race is on. And where's Core Scientific? Those three things could get very interesting, and really, they shouldn't. They should not get interesting. Marathon should be wiping the floor just from a production standpoint, not because they're a better company, blah, blah, blah. They have so many more machines up and running. They Their exahash is so much more than CleanSparks and Core Scientific. We'll look at everybody's exahash, but it's, don't, you know. Tom, have, don't, say, don't say up and running. Ah, true. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're, they're, they, they have more they machines. Exist. Period. That's right. They got Who a lot more plug? machines. Where's the plug? Guys, plug it in. Come on. I, I know they're all plugged in because have there you, have been months where they were all running. But to George's point, I mean, January wasn't one of those months. February wasn't one of those months. And if they mined zero today, today certainly isn't one. They have too many machines. They're not going to have an unlucky day and get zero. Nothing is impossible. And luck does play a big factor in the small. The smaller the time frame, the more that luck plays a factor. But, you know, Marathon has... 28 plus exahash if they were fully up and running and that is too much they have their own pool to get zero in a day would be an extremely unlikely scenario if they were up and running have you heard the knock knock joke i knock well, knock it depends who's there marathon <laughs> marathon who 
We haven't hired the guy to plug him in yet. Sorry. <laughs> That's not a knock-knock joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at any of those jokes. Marathon is the most hated name in the space. Well, it's funny because, you know, for a long time, Marathon won every poll we had. What's the best miner? Which miner has the best upside? Marathon was winning those polls, running away. And lately, it's been overwhelmingly, it's been clean spark. So right. we'll, we'll do that poll again today. Do us a favor, and if you could smash the like button. I know I've asked a couple of times if you just got here or if you haven't smashed the like button. I don't know uh, no, if I, our... I, if our stream's not getting out there, but this is a super low count of likes and viewers for the stream. So help us out. Help get some people to this stream. Let's talk about it. What's I can tell you one thing. Crypto Fever, you're right. Probably Marathon is going to still be the biggest and the best. But I'll tell you what, man. CleanSpark, with, if you going back two years and looking where CleanSpark was and where Marathon was, I can't even believe it's neck to neck. You know what I mean? Oh, CleanSpark's growth over the last two years yeah. has been incredible. I will say Marathon's Marathon's growth has been spectacular as well. Their, Marathon's problem is the expectations that they set for everybody. They talked for so long about where they were going to be and didn't get there that, you know, by the time they got there, it felt like, you know, a year plus old news. So they do have massive growth plans. I mean, they're talking about at least 50, maybe potentially 70. I, I think there's... You know, Marathon, particularly Marathon, I know a lot of people, particularly our members last week, were very down on Riot. I am not down on Riot. I think they have a legit shot at getting to 50 exahash by the end of 2025. And I do think they absolutely, de I think they're going to exercise, if they can, if the price of Bitcoin allows, I think they're going to exercise their option by December 31st, 2025 to buy another 50 exahash of mining and have a plan somewhere 26, 27, or somewhere through the next uh, cycle to get to 100 exahash. I know that sounds crazy, and, and I will tell you, they put that out a couple of months ago, and when I read it, I said, that's ridiculous. You know, that's kind of a little pie in the sky. But the more I look at it, the more I think, I think they're going to give it their best shot. And so, you know, especially, you know, I don't know about 100, but I think between Marathon, CleanSpark, and Riot, they all have pretty solid plans in my mind to get to 50 exahash and that i think is going to be enough not only for this this coming having but i think that's enough exahash for the next having four years from now so and there's some uh, other companies that have big plans as well yes george when do you think the most of these um shelf offerings will be uh financed do you I, think it's going to go on for a long time? I think, or do you think they'll be rounding out here in the next two weeks or three weeks? I think it's going to be different by company, but here's what I would say. Bitfarms has been – Bitfarms put out a $375 million shelf offering, and if you look at their history, they never <laughs> even came by close. by $2. Yeah, Sorry. but they never <laughs> even came close to using their last one. It was open for the full time. It expired. They had not used anywhere near the full amount. BitFarms has been, you know, very careful. Uh, so I don't see them running through their at-the-market offering. Now, Riot and Marathon, Marathon in particular, they just put out a $750 million at-the-market offering in October. And by February, they had used all $750 million. And then they put out a $1.5 billion shelf offering. Now, I am hopeful that they will be I think they had I think they bought a lot of machines. They're talking about and so I'll segue to uh, I think this came out today or yesterday. This is what's going on here. This, so this came out today. Marathon Digital Holdings enters definitive agreement to acquire 200 megawatt Bitcoin mining data center adjacent to a wind farm. They bought this from Applied Digital. I'm a bit confused as to why Applied Digital is selling off assets at this point, but that's a totally separate story. This is what's going on with Marathon. We've talked about this a lot on the channel. They were asset light. Those are their words. So I know a lot of people want to argue that that's not the case, but that's their words. It was in every investor presentation, every monthly update, every conference call. 
This was their business model. We're going to be asset light. We're going to let other people take care of the infrastructure. We're going to get the machines. They felt that was the bottleneck for, th you know, three years ago. They have now completely reversed that. They have all the machines they need and a relationship to get a lot more machines. Now they're trying to bring all those machines. Only 3% of their machines were in-house, if you will. The rest were hosted. So somewhere in here they talk about, I think this gets them up to once all of these purchases are done, 54%. Let me see if I can find this. Yeah, so... This is, this is stuff that CleanSpark already has. Right, so CleanSpark's already done this. Riot's already done this by multiples. So, and it's one of the reasons. Riot's, Riot's exahash is lagging behind the others, but they are wildly ahead of everybody else in infrastructure. So the question is, can they can they catch up in exahash and can they get better at efficiency? So we know what their problems are. I, I'm going to just hold for a minute. I'll come back to this. Clive, thank you very right. much. Very generous super chat. Thank you very much. And thank you for being a member. Let's see. In a recent podcast episode, it was mentioned that uh, Hive is leading the way in terms of mining efficiency. This raises the question, will its superior efficiency enable it to remain competitive and thrive through the upcoming halving event? So there's four or five companies that are very good in uh, their efficiency. Hive has always been one of the leaders in efficiency. I did change. I just did my monthly operational uh, update and compared all the Bitcoin miners I did change my methodology in calculating efficiency because some of these companies, I feel like we've been comparing apples to oranges. There's not, there's no perfect way to do this. But when I adjusted it, a lot of, there's seven, there's maybe six or seven companies that are very, very close in efficiency. Hive is certainly one of those. They have been among the leader for the last, you know, every month pretty much for the last couple of years. But so has Bitfarms. So has CleanSpark. Uh, there's there's some others. You can check out that video I just made a couple of days ago. I go through this in more detail. But yes, so Hive has a lot less. My concern with Hive is, despite their efficiency in Bitcoin mining, um, they're they're at five and a half exahash. So, you know, comparing them to even a, I'm not going to call it a second tier, but a, a, there's there's a bunch of companies that already have plans, purchase orders in place to get to 20 exahash. So, you know, Hive's at 5.5 and plans to get to maybe 8. So now they're swapping out almost their entire fleet. So it's going to be a very efficient fleet. They're, they run at a high level of efficiency as far as the amount of Bitcoin they mine per exahash. So, like, I like a lot of stuff about Hive. And so even though they're not going to be one of the, there, there's eight companies that stand, well, I won't, I won't say they stand a chance. They have plans to get to 20 plus exahash, anywhere from 20 to 70 exahash. And, you know, it varies. And, and you know, having plans and getting there are two different things. Right now, there's only one publicly traded company that has more than 20 exahash, and that is Marathon, and as George pointed out, you know, it's not necessarily running at all times. So, you know, there's a lot of companies that Bitfarms, I'll show you, put out a press release. Like they've locked, they've locked down. They're going to get to 21 exahash by the end of this year, and it will be almost all new machines. So, you know, comparing, and Bitfarms is very efficient as well. Very competitive, you know, similar in efficiency to Hive. So for me, I'd rather be in a Bitfarms that is, you know, going to have three or four times the exahash. Now, BitFarms isn't holding any Bitcoin. They have 804 Bitcoin on their balance sheet. It's been several months since they've added any. We'll see if they can ramp up and start adding Bitcoin. Conversely, Hive is holding all of their Bitcoin the last few months, and I think they're going to do so up to the halving. So, you know, they'll have maybe 2,500 Bitcoin on their balance sheet versus, you know, 804 for, for, uh, or sorry, for BitFarms. So every company has their pros and cons. So I like Hive. You know, they're they're not a company that I'm worried about in any way, shape, or form. I just I'm not sure 
if they're going to be a spectacular investment. So, you know, obviously that's for you guys to decide. I was looking at the volume of Riot and Marathon. They were way off today. So these, what this was low volume on these yeah. big moves to the upside. That's that's. Clean, Clean Spark was higher than normal, but those guys were lower. Let's take a look. Or or Yahoo's lying to me. I mean, I I rely on their numbers. They're typically accurate. Their volume number. We could double check them, but. So we'll start with CleanSpark. You said they were a little bit. So CleanSpark uh, was good. They were above yeah. average. Yeah. But. Yeah, Marathon's. Vo this is one of the lowest volume yeah. days I've seen in Marathon in a long, long time. Marathon is usually one of the top three, from a volume standpoint, one of the top three most traded stocks every single day. And I, I'm sure at $55 million, they they were not today let's see if we can just go to that list oh the top ones yeah i'm just going to quickly pull up because i mean they're oftentimes they're number one on that list but if they're not they're usually two or three sometimes you know four or five would be just about the worst but today i think you're going to see they're not anywhere near yeah they're way down here i mean they're not yeah. even in the top I mean, they're still, you know, what is this, 12, 13, 4? They're still in the top 15, but they're usually 1, 2, or 3. And that's not many more shares than, than CleanSpark. And they have a similar share price. So, you know, from a dollar volume standpoint, CleanSpark's starting to trade as much as Marathon. Well, at least it did today. I don't want to make any sweeping assumptions, but at least on this one day. So then let's see what Riot did as well. So Riot, 25.6 versus its 30. So Riot was a little average. Marathon was way less than average. And CleanSpark was a little bit more than average. But yet, all three of them, if we look, uh, you know, Marathon was up 6%. Riot was up 6%. And CleanSpark was up 10%. And everything pulled back a little bit at the end of the day. And, you know, it's obvious why you can see, uh, you know, these actually, that's not true. It was... These three red candles closed out the day. These are on the 15-minute time frame. So, but, you know, the three candles before that were giant green candles. So, we didn't even get back to where we were an hour and a half earlier. So, we still ended up up. What I'm looking for and what I, what I was looking at all day long, and it didn't seem like it was going to happen. I, I wanted to see if we could close today's daily candle above 69,000. We've held, since we got above that, we have held that. You know, it looked hopeless all day today. We were not close to that. And then all of a sudden we jumped way above it. And I started to say, oh, this looks good. But now, I don't know. It's going to be tough to close above 69,000. And not, you know, that's not the be all end all. But if you take a look, we only just crossed this on, on Sunday. This candle closed at $69,032. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all those candles closed above. Now, you know, instead of retesting, yesterday, actually two different days, we candle wicked down and retested 69, and it held. Today, day's not over. We got three hours left before this candle closes, and, you know, we I don't know if it's going to close above 69000 or not. That being the previous all-time high is why I'm looking at that number, right? That was this this yellow line goes back to November of 2021. And you'll see I got the RSI up here. You'll see we did, you know, we've been above 70 almost every single day going all the way back to February 9th. So that's about one month and one week. That's about five weeks that we've been above 70 other than a couple of days here in the middle. We bounced off of it here. And now today we did break to the downside, but obviously this is a big red candle. And the last time we bounced off of 70 was this giant red candle. So this candle has not closed yet. So we don't know where the RSI is going to close today, but this could be, you know, a new low. You got to go all the way back to 
really February 7th. So the question becomes, this leads me to, you know, is Bitcoin ready for this, you know, potentially maybe, a, a, you know, a pullback? I know that's nobody's talking about a pullback. You know, the conversation is how far, how fast, how high. But, you know, we've tried to say this is a volatile asset, right? 20% pullbacks are extremely typical for Bitcoin. And, you know, in the vicious bull runs, 30 or 40 or 50% pullbacks happen from time to time. I'm not, I'm still not expecting that, but. We just got, I mean, in these two daily candles from the high to the low, this was an 11% pullback in the last two days from the high to the low. So, you know, is that it? And now, you know, we're back on track or are we going to start to have some downward momentum? Because the other thing to take a look at is, you know, I don't want to bore people who don't care so much about technical analysis. And this is, you know, some just pretty basic analysis, but on, on the, one day MACD, you will see if this closes like this, and again, there's three more hours, it's looking like we are going to have a bearish crossover on the one day MACD, go red on the histogram. We did have this happen in February. It only held for a few days. It was just this little consolidation period right here. So we had a big move up, and this bearish crossover just resulted in a little sideways consolidation and then the next big move to the upside. So is that going to happen again, right? Is this just going to be a little, you know, sideways action? Or are we going to get one of these 20% corrections? That's the question going up right now. That's perfect. That's a good call. Because I just feel like from, you know, from our live streams, and from I've been trying to watch as much YouTube as possible from other much, much, much larger channels that cover Bitcoin. And I will tell you, I can't find any negative sentiment anywhere. So that is something <laughs> that's a little worrisome, right? Everybody it keeps talking about, you know, and we've talked about some of it. You know, one of one of the things we've talked about, and I think Jeez. I have this up. Oof. Here, the last time Bitcoin, so we talked about this on the members only. I'm not sure if we talked about this on the public. The last time Bitcoin recaptured its previous all-time high, <laughs> back in 2020, when it got to, you know, just under 20,000, where it was in 2017 in the previous bull market. So, you know, it went through its crypto winter and recaptured its previous all-time high. From that day, you can see this is the chart right here. 23 days later... Bitcoin was up 110%. So that was a more than a double in 23 days. And the reason we're talking about this is obviously now Bitcoin once again has finally recaptured its previous all-time high. November of 2021, Bitcoin hit 69,000. So we just got back to that last week. So now this is not an anomaly. All three previous cycles, somewhere between three weeks and three months, Bitcoin pulled a double. So it's happened every time. But what I will say, and what we said the last time we talked about this is, just because it's happened every time, there's only been three cycles. So this is a very, very small sample group. Bitcoin is a very, very new thing. So drawing these conclusions, you know, this always happens. This has never happened. If you take a look at the last cycle, we broke almost every one of those. So all the things that have never happened before, have happened in this last cycle. All the things that, you know, automatically always happen, you know, some of those aren't happening. So a couple of, for instances, until this previous cycle, once Bitcoin recaptured its all-time high, it, it has never fallen below its previous all-time high. So last, in the cycle we just, you know, are in right now, that happened. So... You know, once it got above 19 and ran up to its new all-time high, which was 69,000, it did go break that 19,900 and get all the way down to 15,500. So that had never happened before. There were a lot, and there's a lot of those things. I'll tell you, so that's a negative one that never happened before. Here, we just had something never happened before happen last week. 
Bitcoin has never reached its previous all-time high prior to the halving. So that just happened right now. So this, this bull market cycle is way, way ahead of any of the other previous bull market cycles. So the closest it's ever gotten was a candle wake up to 30% under its previous all-time high. So, you know, that is not close. We've taken out our previous all-time high now. Mm. And we still have, you know, 35-ish days or whatever the case may be until the halving. So, you know, who knows? It may continue to run. So it's hard to say, like, is it going to pull that double in somewhere between three weeks and three months? Maybe. Or, you know, has the run up this time been so vicious? I, I want to go to the more than the – let me zoom out even a little bit more and go to the one week just to show, like – oh, sorry. This is – got lines all over the place. I have, a, I have another poll. Is better money in Bitcoin or Bitcoin miners? That's gonna be what was the poll. result of the first poll? The first poll was 60. It's almost split. Uh, 56, yes. 43, no. And that was, was this the bottom for the I've, Bitcoin miners? Yes. Are the Bitcoin miners going to start to rebound? So, so from the bottom... We double bottomed in November and then in December of 2022. We got down to about 15,500 with the FTX situation. From that bottom to the top today, and we're way off, you know, we pulled off of that. That's 383% move to the upside, close to a 400% move to the upside from the bottom already. And we're not even at the halving. So you can see. Like, this is much, much more upward pressure than we typically get. Obviously, I well, I'll say obviously, I believe the biggest factor in that are is the spot ETFs. We'll go through uh, the volume on that and the inflows on that. It's just been, it's been staggering, and I think there's more to come. And, you know, that's, that's, the Bitcoin spot ETFs were a game changer. I think everybody thought that was going to be the case coming in. There were a lot of people saying it's going to be a sell the news of situation. And for a week, they were right because the Grayscale uh, had a lot of outflow and it continues to have outflow on a daily basis. But overall, the inflows have far exceeded. Uh, you know, we've got, I think the Grayscale's sold them i think somewhere around two hundred and forty thousand bitcoin since it converted to an, a spot etf so you know that is massive outflows but the rest of them have made up for that and then some by far right blackrock's etf's already over two hundred thousand bitcoin uh fidelity is not that far behind there's a couple others that are doing very well we'll take a look at those So let's just look. Let's just take a quick look at that. Where did it go? All right. So this is just the last two weeks. And obviously, we don't have today's information yet. But if you look at the last two weeks, let me just take a time out and get to uh, Mike's Money. Thank you very much, Mike's Money, for the super chat. And Mike's Money, it looks like you are a member as well. I don't know that name. Are you a new member? Did you change your name? Am I sleeping at the wheel? One year of membership. Okay. Well, thanks for answering that question, Mike. Well, thank <laughs> you very much for being a member for one year. Did you change yeah, your name you. or am I just... He did. He changed his name. Okay. Okay. One year membership. Thank you, Tom and George. You guys are changing lives with what you do. When time permits, could you give an update on Beam? Thanks, Yes, I can. The first update that I will give you. So Beam, uh, and there's two Beams out there. Uh, there's Beam Therapeutics, and that's not the one that I'm in. Uh, beam. The Beam that I'm in is Stock Ticker B-E-E-M. I still have my position. I have very, very slowly averaged into that position over time. I am waiting. I don't know how long it's going to take. Beam, I'm just going to spend a minute uh, since Mike was so generous uh, with his super chat and to bring that up and to thank him for one year of membership. Uh, let me just quickly bring up Beam and show you guys. This is a, 
this is a long time position for me and it's you know it All hasn't right. done its thing yet and you know sometimes you just gotta wait for it and so we'll see what are you in at it for i'm still underwater on this oh so are you? yes now i'm very close but i i started if you look at i'll just pull up the five year i mean this was at 73 dollars so you know when this pulled back down into the i started buying this in the 30s somewhere around here so you know it's coming up on three years <laughs> i've been dollar cost averaging into this thing so i have you know 10 times as many shares as i had uh but i think i'm still a little bit upside down on this but that's okay you know some things take longer than others this is this is a very unique product one the there's two industries that this is in, both of which have gotten beaten up severely. In addition, this is a small cap, high growth stock. You'll see its market cap is only $98 million. The two industries this is in, this is a this is an EV charging station. So your knee-jerk reaction would be, whoa, that's not a great space to be in. The EV charging stations have uh, struggled. Some of them have already gone out of business. I don't hold out a lot of hope for the others. Uh, you, you know, Blink, Charge Point are the other big ones. Um, different story, but this is a very different product. This does not compete with those. This is an off the grid product. So it's also, in addition to being an EV charging station, it's a solar play. So, you know, for 70 grand, you can park, they basically pull this in, you can park it in your parking lot and <laughs> you can charge your EV unit. You can charge your EV and it's solar powered 100 percent off the grid so there's no installation there's no permitting there's not of that it doesn't take they literally just pull it up park it and it's ready to go and it's also basically you know a generator if you will because you know it's it's got power that it stores so i love what these guys are doing you can see the one-year price target and and i know this doesn't mean anything and it's been this for years it's you know it's close to 22 dollars the, the analysts love this stock. I love this stock. I, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. I think it's those three reasons. The small cap high growth stuff, we are still in a very, very risk off environment. People are getting, you know, 5% in money markets. So there's still $6 trillion sitting on the sideline, not coming into stocks like this. In addition to that, there is an association as a uh, a charging station and solar is not doing well either right now. So I think all that aside, this is a very unique product. They get a lot of government contracts, so I'm not going to go on and on about this, but just to keep everybody up to date, not financial advice. You know, if you want to put this on your watch list, feel free. It's something I've been in for years, and, you know, from time to time, I'll add a little bit to this position. I do think it's forming a nice base right here, but, you know, we'll see. I've waited for three years. I'm probably going to wait this one out. I'll go down with the ship on this. I don't have a stop loss. I think this is a great company. If if they don't make it, they don't make it. But that's Beam, everybody. I think that um, well, once EVs become hot again, you know, they will come become hot again for a little bit. I think I think there's another chance. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. Yeah, I mean, to George's point, and George has off screen talked a lot to me about this. You know, we've been considering the EV. If you think, you know, it's this is a this is a EV winter. You know how we had a crypto winter yeah. and and all of our cryptocurrencies were down and the Bitcoin miners were down. Well, it's an EV winter. The EV stocks have been gutted worse than the Bitcoin mining stocks. Now, oh, did you see what happened today? I don't. I don't think Another so. Another one bit the dust. Uh, was it? Guess which one the first one was. Uh, well, I did read an article yesterday, the day before, that Fisker was considering yeah. bankruptcy. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they did. did it. They, they did it. Yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. See, and Fisker is one of the ones I held out hope for. I thought they had. Yeah. Uh, great car too. Right. I thought it was a great car. And, and there you go. And they didn't make it. So to, you know, to that point, George and I are looking for the next industry or, you know, sector or whatever you want to call it that 
maybe money's going to start rotating into. And maybe it's not immediately, but, you know, you got to start building out your positions. And, and the EVs have been absolutely decimated. Some of them deserve to be decimated, in my opinion. So some of them are never coming back. Some of them are already out of business, apparently, as George is just telling us right now. One of them's, you know, just joined the, the list today. I don't know if did they... Are they going into I don't the know organization if they, or I don't know if they filed or were in the process of filing now that you know I just know that I read it. Something's going on with them. But Edmund, I agree. I'm not a big E V supporter, but the problem isn't that. The problem is it's the narrative. And if you can't go against the narrative, or maybe you can in this case. Hello, Seth. I just saw Seth's name in there. He said we're his BFF. What, what, do I need to do this? A heart? Heart? I can't even do that. How do you do it? Heart? I can't do How do you? I don't even know how people do this. <laughs> this is one of those chew gum and whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Admin saying, George, I said TVs, but I think it means EVs will not yeah, become yeah. hot. The batteries. Did you just go through this? The yeah, batteries yeah, yeah, are yeah, killed was... below 20 degrees. Fahrenheit. I know. I mean, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm doing my heart now on screen. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I think, I don't know. I mean, it, this, this is a chance. We're just looking for opportunities to make money besides just in the miners, Bitcoin miners. That's what I'm looking for. That's right. What's the next big thing? And I will tell you, I have a lot of other stocks I'm in, and I have some ETFs I'm in that I feel very strongly are going to do well over the next 18 months. And I have some companies that are, some of them are very popular. Some of them are hated. Um, I'll just say, you know, one of my biggest positions is PayPal, which I know every time I say that, I get a slew of people telling me I'm an imbecile and stop wasting my money and et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like uh, I, I, I like PayPal, not financial advice. Obviously, everybody do your own thing, and, and I know – Somebody somewhere is going to start yeah, weed mocking stocks me might, for PayPal. But. I, hate, I hate to say that, but weed stocks might become hot because they've gotten destroyed too. The, the weed stocks have been down for so long. It's unbelievable. And now, you know, a lot of them are, they're under, you know, trading under a dollar. A lot of them are trading over the counter. That might be a nice little play too. I never even thought of those guys. Just goes up in smoke. <laughs> I think you got to choose wisely on that. It's a tough one. I don't know, right? I know those are those had their turn as of a lot of these stocks. If you look back to like December of 2020, January, February of 2021, there were a lot of these industries and a lot of stocks inside of these industries that went into a gigantic bubble. They they 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 x and most of them are now left for dead. So the question is, are any of them, do any of them have a good underlying business in there somewhere where when we finally get back to a risk on market, which again, as every single time that these Fed cuts, the rate cuts get pushed off by the Fed, you know, is just a, more of a delay into money rotating. So, I do think small caps, you know, small caps, medium caps are are going to thrive over the next, you know, 18 months. But it's it's delayed. It's not going to happen as soon as I thought it was going to happen. I'm looking at Budweiser. Budweiser doesn't look as bad as it, I thought it would be, too. I mean, they're about half. I mean, 64, their high was was, you know, around 2020. 2019. JD said PayPal looks range locked, won't get above 70. So I, I think, you know, it it's it has been range locked and it's been hard for it to break out of 60, which I feel like it just did. So, you know, I did a lot of dollar cost averaging in in the 50s. So uh, and at this point, I probably have filled out that position and now I will just wait. And so as a long t this is one of the things that, you know, for. And you guys can tell, you know, in the Bitcoin miners, and a lot of you I know must be the same way because, you know, with Bitcoin miners, you got to be 
Well, you don't have to be. They're very volatile stocks. So if you're making money swing trading, if you're making money day trading, and you know you do you, and and that's awesome. I think most of us here are probably dollar cost averaging into these over time. Hopefully, we have our exit strategy. Some of you may have already taken profits in a few of the run ups, but I am more of a buy and hold, and so I'm trying to find companies. You know, maybe they're not at the bottom, or maybe they're not going to take off tomorrow, but you know. In a 12-month, 18-month, 24-month window, you know, as those, that's when I plan to be, you know, starting to exit or at least trim my positions in the Bitcoin miners, right? I'm not going to hold every single share all the way to the top forever. There is a profit-taking strategy here for me at some point. I'm not close to it yet, but, you know, as I take those profits, hopefully I've got the next thing behind it that will start to move and then you know, rinse, repeat with whatever comes next. Hang on. <laughs> Did you, oh, let's see. High for Sorry. the Bitcoin before the halving. So that was our last poll. I'll just go through the results while you're doing that, George. 48% said above 72,500. Uh, 34% between 70,000 and 72,500, 67 K or below 12%. So, you know, we got below 67 K today. Just so for those that feel like that's, you know, far away, we got down to 65,565, according to this chart today. So I know, had six on Coinbase. 67423.23 60 that's where we are right now no that's where we got down to at, at four o'clock today today oh, oh at the close i'm saying on the low of the day what we got da we got down to 65,565 today whoa really oh wow yeah so ouch didn't know we got that low yeah i mean this was this was you know, after hours last night, I, I bought some, I, I did buy, I didn't buy a lot today. I bought some yesterday. So I'll just let everybody know. I, I usually try and tell people, uh, I did buy some more marathon that hit my price target. And, and for those who follow along, I did say for marathon, I was going to buy some at 22. I was going to buy some at 20 and I was going to buy some at 18. So, you know, I got all three of those. I got, uh, to, to make my purchases. Now, if it gets down to 16, I'll buy some. That was my price target was 16, but I never I never plan my purchases for for that target because I you know, I know I'm never going to hit the high, I'm never going to hit the low, so I'll dollar cost average along the way. Now obviously if it gets to 16, I'll buy some more. If it gets, you know, if it gets below that, I may buy some more. Obviously all the while as George always says, you know, all these things, it's a fluid situation and you've got to you know, if it's down to 15 or 14 or 13 for a bad reason, that would be a different story. But right now, I don't think that's what's going on with the Bitcoin miners, right? They were all pretty much across the board. They were all having big pullbacks. So I did buy some Marathon. I bought some Riot. That hit a couple of my price targets. So I bought some of that yesterday as well. And I bought some Iris Energy, which is my smallest position out of all the Bitcoin miners. My two biggest positions are CleanSpark and uh, BitFarms. So I didn't buy any of those, but it's not because I don't like, you know, where they're at or that there wasn't a buying opportunity. I just, I dollar cost averaged way past what I considered a full position back when they were, you know, back when CleanSpark was trading between 3 and $4 forever. I got to an oversized position. So, you know, I'm not going to buy, even though 15 may have been a great buying opportunity I'm not. I'm not going to buy a something that I'm up 350 percent on. So, uh, and you know, there's sometimes maybe some of you will, but for I have other things that are ahead of that on the list. So, in any event, even though those aren't my three highest conviction, my two highest conviction plays, I'm already filled out. So, that's what I did yesterday, you, and I did buy. Go ahead, George. Do you own any gold or silver stocks or? Any bars or any of that stuff? I own no gold. I own no silver. None physically. I'm not, I don't invest in any companies. 
that are related to either of those things. I know gold is actually running up to an all-time high, but if you look at its performance over time, I mean, it's just, other than stuff that, you know, I got wrong and lost money on, I mean, I'll just go to gold. I just put a poll up, too. Do you own gold miners or silver miners or or the asset gold or silver? Sorry, I didn't write that in there. Or both. So if I go to a one month, right, gold did, I mean, if you go all the way back to 2018. Yeah. But if you go back to, I'll even go to this low, which it kind of bottomed out at again. So we'll go right here. October 2022. So. You know, that's 16 months ago or whatever the case may be. So this is one of the biggest runs gold had in a long, long, long time, and it's 31%. So that's a that's a great return, but, you know, that's, that's in almost a year and a half, it's up 31%. So, and that's about as good as it gets, right? Because you can look, if you look the other way, if you bought it in 2011, you know, by 2020, you were up zero. That's a rough run. So, yes, after after nine or ten years of going completely sideways, it's had a nice 30% run up. But I just, I don't think gold's going to be something that doubles. I don't think it will ever compete with the returns you're going to get on Bitcoin or a few of the other high-quality cryptocurrencies. I don't know. I, ch I changed it and put in none just because everyone's been saying that. I'm just curious. I mean, I don't own any. I don't have any physical gold or silver. I have money on the sidelines. I have money yeah. in money markets. I just. Oh, I thought you meant like, you know, neatly stacked. <laughs> no, I have I have money <laughs> in money markets. I'd rather have it there than in than in gold, if you can believe that. It's a more reliable <laughs> return and and i'm not alone there's six trillion dollars of money that's with me on that with interest rates this high you know if you can get five percent on your money in a money market that's a compelling argument so that's one of the reasons all of the smaller companies and all of the high growth companies and all the risk on companies continue to you know lag so far behind while the s p and the nasdaq despite the fact they pulled back a little bit in the last week they're both at all-time highs by a lot, whereas the Russell, if I pull up the Russell three-year chart, you're going to see it's down in the last three years. So I will do that right now. Could you do that, Tom? Big news? Yes. Craig Wright is not Satoshi. Ah, thank you. You want me to pull that one? Let's, let's just take a second. <laughs> Justice James Mellor's ruling on Craig Wright. So I just want to oh, give you. Oh, you got to think. <laughs> yes, I want to tell you the judge's words specifically. The judge said first that Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Second, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto in the period 2008 to 2011. And and he prefaced that by saying, having considered all the evidence and submissions presented to me in the trial, I've reached the conclusion that the evidence is overwhelming. Right. Therefore, for the reasons which will be explained in that written judgment in due course, I will make certain declarations. So those are the first two declarations. Uh, third, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And fourth, he is not the author of the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. So across the board. So this, I think, was, and, I, and we'll only spend a minute on this. I don't know how much people are following this, but I was actually a little bit surprised because the judge had a lot of wiggle room. It was the, what, what's their name? The C A C O P A that was suing Craig Wright uh, and looking for a ruling for the judge to say he's not Satoshi. So the judge could have punted on this and said, listen, I'm not going to say that he is Satoshi, but, you know, you didn't present enough of a case for me to definitively say that he is not. But so given that as an option, I mean, to come out and 
say all these things, hopefully this finally puts this to bed. Because the thing is, he's suing and been suing everybody under the sun and discouraging development in the Bitcoin right. ecosystem because everybody's afraid to do everything because he's filing a lawsuit against him saying, hey, I'm Satoshi, I own the white paper, don't mess with my stuff. And, you know, it's enough to discourage some people. So that's why they came after him and said, no, this is ridiculous. No, he's not Satoshi. And the judge actually agreed and said the evidence was overwhelming. So for those of you wondering, we don't know who Satoshi is, but uh, we now have a court ruling who it's not. <laughs> If you were following along, it was high drama. It was a fascinating court case. George, I know well, you you were watching. Yeah. Do you think it would be appealed? No, there's a, d no. You don't. I, I if it does, it will hold in my very strong opinion. I mean, the re there's a reason he said the evidence was overwhelming because uh it was. Yeah, B BSV got wrecked, by the way. Oh, it did? Yeah. Down to 87.61. Down 20%. 20% in one day. And then insane? That's a bad day. I think it's going to 50. I mean, he still has value because there's a lot of people that have, um, they believed he was the guy. Well, as you know, I was on record on that one. That never made any sense to me, and there didn't seem to be any credence to any of his claims or evidence. So, the judge has spoken. Duckman, hello. Stronghold Digital Mining. <laughs> Please. The right, and regular, our, our shout out to Stronghold. Crypto Fever said, George, I told you that was FUD. A blind man could have told you he wasn't Satoshi. Well, now the <laughs> we judge are all agrees. Satoshi. He's the only person in the world who is not Satoshi. Keith said, Keith, hello, Keith, longtime viewer. Uh, I think, Keith said, I think George is Satoshi. And you were just trying to throw us off. Maybe yes, Keith's on to something. Been. Just only thing I can tell you is paper wallet. Paper wallet? Paper wallet. Do I, I don't think I know what that means, do I? You can hold Bitcoin in a paper wallet. Like it's it's oh. just code on a piece of paper. Oh, paper. okay. I've seen so, a lot of really cool wallets. It makes me want to. Yeah, I made mine into an airplane <laughs> with my Bitcoin. So I just say, watch watch my money fly around. So I can watch my money fly around. <laughs> so let's just talk for one second here. Let's get let's get on on track. Well, first, what's the what do we got going here? Gold or silver miners or hold the asset. So, right right now, we got 16% of the people say they hold gold, 8% silver, 9% say both, and 68% own none. So, this crowd is probably skewed uh, more towards not holding those because, this obviously, we are a cryptocurrency-heavy crowd, a Bitcoin-heavy crowd. So, that group is probably holds less gold than the average group. I think younger people hold a lot less gold. Than older people, I won't put myself in either of those categories. I'll let you guys decide. You've decided I'm old. Okay. I'm going to end this poll. You got another poll? Uh, I will think about the next poll. Okay. I just want to talk. I just want to go through a little bit of these. You know, we didn't talk about price action on some of these Bitcoin miners because there were some big, big movers. The, the biggest mover on the day was BitDeer. And I do think, I want to find this because I'm just surprised that this made such a gigantic difference. Bitcoin miner BitDeer 
is, quote, differentiated from its peers. This according to Benchmark. So Benchmark initiated coverage of BitDeer with a buy rating and a price target of 13. I have not seen an analyst pick up one of these companies and have it make this kind of a massive uh, impact. Now, today was a gigantic update for everything uh, well, not everything, but it was a green day across the board for all Bitcoin miners. It looks like at a glance, Iris was in last place, and I, that's my it's my smallest position, but I do own some Iris, and it was only up 0.88, so less than 1%. Bitfarms, I think, was the second worst. I own that as well. It was up only 2.26%. Uh, but you had, you know, Cypher up 11%, CleanSpark up 10%, uh, Riot Marathon up 6%, Terror Wolf 6%, Hutton Hive 4%, Core Scientific up 12%. You know, everything, everything was having a nice day by and large. Bitdeer almost 24% to the upside. And I do think it was this, um, and I'll let you guys read if you care. I'm not going to read you this whole article. Uh, this I found on CoinDesk, but it, you know, you'll find this anywhere if you Google it. The miners' shares are appealing due to its wide gap between its valuation and its growth prospects. The transition of hash rate from hosting to self-mining will boost the company's upside exposure for further increases in the Bitcoin price. So I just would have two things to say about this. You know, I don't know who these people are, and so you know, their opinion is their opinion. This may very well be a buy for all I know, and it may very well hit $13, but for me, uh, BitDeer is not one of my top 10. Uh, on my personal list that I rank, it is not one of my top 10. I have no idea what their self-mining growth plans are. They really, they, they've had a couple of months where actually their amount of self-mining exahash went down. So... Uh, you know, they had it some months a while back where it grew a lot. So this company's got their hands in a lot of different things. I don't know. This may end up being a gigantic winner. They are not a U.S. company, so there's less available information than, uh, than the U.S. companies that are traded on the NASDAQ are required to provide. So for those reasons, I don't have them in my top 10. I'm not in this stock, but it could be a big winner. So let's do that poll, George. Well, go ahead, Tom. What poll do you want? Is uh, regarding BitDeer, are you in? Are you in BitDeer? Are you considering being in BitDeer, or are you staying away from BitDeer? I put is uh, BitDeer a good investment? Boom! Oh. <laughs> you can make it that simple. That's a lot. No, no, easier. no. But I did. I did. Is a uh, big. <laughs> oh, <joking. laughs> I'm such an ass. So I don't know. As I mean, as you guys know, I do think there will be a big run up in a lot of these Bitcoin mining companies, and Bitdeer may very well be one of those companies. So I just, for me, I don't have it in my top ten, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be uh, a big success. As st you know, statistically, as far as the number of Bitcoin they mine and all that, they are a top ten Bitcoin miner. From a, you know measuring it a lot of different ways, I just don't. What I don't see is that big growth plan of self mining, so that's that's what gives me pause with them. <laughs> Did you see? I guess some somebody called out the true cost of HUD's Bitcoin mining, and she's trying to debunk some information. Somebody put a note on the in the comments of the video that Sue came out today and said their cost was nineteen thousand and change. I think is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't see that myself, but honestly, if their cost is nineteen thousand ish, that's not bad. You know, it's not it's not a leader, but that's not bad, and it's less than I would have guessed. So. You know, if that's if that's <laughs> accurate, that's 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 not oh, bad at all. No, oh shit, I forgot to add that in. Oh well, <laughs> just let them tell. It's nineteen. It's close enough. Reason one hundred and fifty of why we got sued. <laughs> <laughs> HUD's 
Hutt, you know, one of the compelling arguments with Hut that somebody, uh, several people have made recently is their market cap is pretty similar to their hodl position right now. Yeah. Which means the rest of the entire company is being valued at zero, if you think about it that way. And most of the other companies that have a big hodl stack, so their market the cap is quarter. three or four or five times the value of their hodl. Whereas for Hut, it's almost one to one. So this is the third quarter numbers. Which is the period ended what? Because each... 2023. The period ended December 31st, 2023? No, the third quarter of 2023. Well, what's their, what's their fiscal year? Because sometimes it can be the third quarter, oh. but that might be the latest and greatest quarter. I don't believe her listening to her talk. Oh, are you yeah, watching because, right now? Yeah, yeah, because she's saying you should go to Twitter and pull this up and play this. It'd be real interesting because it's real interesting to listen to her talk. Well, I mean, usually why? <laughs> Can you give us the uh, highlights? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, she's just... She's probably here. I'll just do this. I'm going to send it to you. She's uh, she always is good for ratings. <laughs> I'm sending it to you in the chat. I'm looking. You see it? Yes. Real time. Look at this. All right. Let me see if I can make this happen. Let's see. Real time, guys. We're watching. Tom in action. This could this could go either way. Trust me. Would you go to one of the things you've already opened up? What do you got? Two screens? Yes, I do. <laughs> Watching a boomer at work. <laughs> Outrageous. He's a Gen Xer. I'm not a boomer. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. No, you're a Gen Xer. I said that. Yes. Well, that's what they yeah. call me. I don't. I don't feel like I fit into any of your labels. <laughs> yeah, who could trust Hut's leadership? Peter says. Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter. Ignore the <laughs> Calvin. Ignore the. We well, should put the used car salesman at HUD, Tim. Yes, that's what they. That's what they wanna. That's what they wanna say about HUD. Is is it? You oh. really can't. You really haven't figured it out. I'm. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing <laughs> my best. No pressure, Tom. <laughs> All right, well, let's move good. on. I'll get this ready, and then we'll come back to it. <laughs> I, I disappeared. <laughs> Ta-da! What happened? It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. They what? don't need to see me. What? No, you can't disappear. Come back. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's okay. It's no big deal. Who cares? Let's. No one cares. Let's see. If I you don't guys care. Hear this. You I, don't care. I care. We care. You got a. I got an empty window. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm not doing anything. Did I just move you back? I don't know. Let's see. No, you didn't. <laughs> it looks like you're back on my screen, George. I, I got to take access away from you. You're abusing your. I didn't touch anything. But did I do that? Yeah, yes. For real? For real. All right. Realsies. All right. We'll get back on track. Sorry, we have we've massively <laughs> digressed. That's I blame myself. Uh, boomer. <laughs> this is why I call Tom a boomer. Come back, George. That's it, Tom. I'm out. 
All right, we can't. This is a two minute clip from Sue. I, this is too long. <laughs> it took four minutes for you to get there. I know. That's true. Well, that's true. We could have watched the whole thing between then. <laughs> I've, I gotta collect myself. I'm, you've 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 thrown me for a you've thrown me for a loop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I really take you off the screen? Is that what happened? It's okay. Keep going. They can hear me. Okay. All right. Let's get back on track. What? First of all, first of all, welcome. And if you have not yet, we're at 165 likes. If you could please smash the like button, we would appreciate it. It helps the stream out. In real time. Secondly, we are in the middle of a poll. Uh, Bitdeer. Bitdeer had the best day. The reason we're doing this poll. Is Bitdeer a good investment? Yes or no? And the reason we're doing this poll is Bitdeer had the best day out of all the Bitcoin miners. It was up just under 24% today. Uh, it had. Uh, let's see who these guys are. Benchmark yeah, initiated coverage and put a $13 price point on them, and they got a gigantic, gigantic bump from this. So, despite the fact that Benchmark likes them, apparently we have 69 votes in, 70 votes in. So far, our group here, not a big fan of BitDeer. 73% say no, not a good investment. 27% say yes, so feel free to vote. Voting is free. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about this if we can for a minute. This is a two, this is a two part story. The first part is MicroStrategy acquires twelve thousand more Bitcoin with convertible senior notes. So this just came out March eleventh. This was Monday. So. They, they did some convertible notes. They actually ended up raising a lot more money than they thought they were going to raise. With that money, they bought 12,000 Bitcoin. They now hold 205,000 Bitcoin. So this was Monday. So you'll see MicroStrategy, they were targeting $600 million, but you'll see MicroStrategy purchased 12,000 Bitcoin, mostly funded by the $782 million raise from its recent convertible debt. So as every time they offer convertible debt, there ends up being a lot more interest in it than than, than what they are initially offered. So they ended up raising $782 million. They bought $821 million of Bitcoin or 12,000 Bitcoin. This gives them now 205,000 Bitcoin. So that is part one of this story. Part two of this story. So that was Monday. Today... Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy prices upsized $525 million debt offering to buy more Bitcoin. So they just bought 12,000 Bitcoin on Monday, really probably the few days prior to that. Now they're raising another $525 million. So what do you want to guess? That this is going to end up more like six hundred and fifty or $700 million by the time they're done. And they're going to go buy another 10,000 Bitcoin. So for those of you who uh, are worried that this is the top, you know, somebody asked, is this the end of the bull market? You know, Bitcoin crossed its all time high. And what did Michael Saylor do? He bought 12,000 Bitcoin and now he's raising money to go buy maybe eight or 10,000 more Bitcoin, you know, one week later. And and for that, if you take a look, I think I have their chart up. For that, he is the market is rewarding them. They're at this 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 stock since February. I'm just gonna go from February seventh. That's one month and one week ago, right? So in the last five weeks, this stock's up 261 percent in five weeks. So unfortunately for a lot of us. Our turn has not yet come, although for many of you, you may be in MicroStrategy. So congratulations to everybody who is in this stock and held this stock. Congratulations on a monster run up in a five week window of time. I actually got out of this stock. Now, I did put most of that money into BitX when I got out of MicroStrategy. And, you know, that has performed extremely well <laughs> also. So, you know, I'm not crying too much about it, but. 
this is this is a phenomenal run. And and the Bitcoin, mi- you know, while the Bitcoin miners have gone sideways, most of them are red in this five weeks. MicroStrategy's up 260 percent. Are you sleeping, George? I'm just being funny because somebody said George is snoring. So <laughs> I mean, this is a vicious, vicious run. Pick a miner, any miner, George, pick a miner. And we'll do in in the five weeks that MicroStrategy is up 260 percent. What's your favorite miner? Well, you know my favorite, and I'll just do it. Clean Spark. Let's so let's take a look at Clean Spark from February sixth. So a nice run as well, by the way. Uh huh. What Clean so Clean Spark's number one by a mile. They're up a hundred and twenty six percent. So I think you'll find that is the winner out of all of these. Well, let's right. take a look at a couple of the other ones. Let's pick one more. I think you picked the one that's done the best out of all of them by far. But let's well, that's why I did it. Let's take a look at another one. Any other one. But even that's not even half of what MicroStrategy did. And CleanSpark has definitely been the best performing Bitcoin mining stock by a mile over the last uh, all year, really. Who you got next, George? One more, one more, one more. Do any. Any? All right. You do, okay. I said do something any. crazy. All right, they're down. So they're they are since When do when do you think people need to get out of these? They're down 21% in the period of time MicroStrategy is up 260%. But very few people are invested in any. I'm going to go to like a Riot or a Marathon. Those are the big dog. Marathon's the big dog. Let's see what they've done in that same period of time. So from February 6th until now, so MicroStrategy's up 260%. Marathon's up 16%. So this is the frustration of a lot of us, myself included. Most of my largest positions are Bitcoin mining companies. So, you know, I'm feeling the pain as well. Having said that, I remain bullish on these companies, not financial advice. You know, you guys got to do what you got to do. Uh Everybody should have their own strategy. You know, if you've lost confidence and you can't sleep at night anymore, then, you know, it might be time to reassess whatever your plan is. By the same token, you know, if you don't want to just fall prey to just panic. All right. Welcome to Talking Investing. Uh Ricky, member for 11 months. Thank you very much, Ricky, for being a member. Ricky asks, do you have any interviews lined up? I don't have any interviews lined up right now. So I I got somebody in mind, and I've I've backed way off of the interviews because there's a couple other people out there interviewing all these same people, and I don't want to be redundant if everybody's already interviewing them. However, uh, you know, not everybody asks all the same questions, so... You know, if you guys think there's some value in this, I, I'll tell you the person we talked about for a long time that I didn't get. We, we've had Jason on from Riot. You know, we've had pretty much everybody on. Not everybody. Uh, a lot. I think Jason's probably worth getting. It, you know, if I had to pick the person I, I would talk to next, it would be Jason. I'm sorry. At, I don't know if I was saying at Marathon. At Riot. Uh, CEO of Riot. Uh, but there are several that that I would like to talk to. Some are better a better interview than others. You know, some some of these people are very dry, and you know, as I've done the interviews, people didn't necessarily enjoy them just because they found well, them boring. You should um, try to do Jason at Riot in two weeks when they're supposed to bring up um, their whatever it's called, Cordonis or whatever it's called. We got an invite, by the way, to I'll talk about that after. To well, I don't have to talk about it after to go to go look at Corsicana and and tour the facility. Oh, really? Oh, nice. So that might be something we may want to consider doing. And I think they're having some kind of event, so 
I don't know if I'm just is on it, their mailing list or whatever the case may be. Or yeah, I'm sure. I mean, no, you're a mover and a shaker. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's it. That's what it is. So they're doing an event, and, you know, so maybe we'll go do that. But what I would rather do than do that is get them on the channel. So I see some people saying yes. Uh, Calvin said, for sure, Tom, just ask the hard questions to these guys. And so I like to try to ask a mix of questions, including some questions that are, you know, the tough the tough questions that we really want the answers to, right? Everybody can read and listen to the press release themselves. We don't need to talk about that stuff. There's some real questions. And so I think, you know, that's why I'd like to talk to Jason. There's a couple of, I think they have something going there, but there's a couple, two, three things that I think investors want to know about. So to whatever extent that he can talk about them, that's one that I think is of value. Uh, you know, talking to Clean Spark, they've got a lot going on. As far as, you know, they just added six exahash recently, and they are going to continue to ramp up. Bitfarms has a massive amount of exahash they're getting ready to get online. So at some point, maybe as that starts to come online, maybe it's worth checking in and talking to them as well. Those would be my top three personally. Crypto Fever said it's content for your channel and we can tell a lot from the answer behaviors responses. So so all right, so I'm going to put that back on the list. I did back off of that just because these guys were, you know, making the rounds and I just felt like I was going to be another uh but but let's get back let's get back to some interviews then. Interview time. And I just got, you know, I get emails from time to time somebody one of the Bitcoin miners asked if I wanted to have their CFO on. And it's like, I don't think you guys want to hear. I, no offense. I mean, I am have an accounting background, but I don't think anybody wants to hear from the CFO. I think you guys let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I think you want to hear from the CEO. George, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I mean, they... They both have interesting things to say. There's some value there. Yeah. Darren S. said the herd is snoozing on a giant opportunity in Wolf, but the herd usually gets it wrong and chases later. So Darren has been pounding the table on Wolf. So if and when Wolf runs, Darren will be able to give everybody a giant I told you so because... I know this is not the first time you've pointed that out, and it's still, I'll pull up that chart. I mean, it's still where I would consider, you know, and uh, if if you're looking to add to this, you know, you could consider this a buying opportunity. It did get down at its low in February. It got down to, you know, sorry, I'm on Iris. Let me get to the right chart. I'm like, that number is not right at all. Okay. So it got down to like looks like a dollar twenty four was its low in the middle of January. Not financial advice. I'm just not expecting every anything really. I'm not expecting Wolf or any other big ones to revisit these lows. You know there is looks like there's a line of support just underneath this somewhere in the buck sixty range. They're at a dollar seventy eight right, right now, but they did get you know back in December. So they peaked on the 28th, the day after most of the other companies, right? To get from here back to where they were in December, that's a 77% move to the upside. So, you know, they're down a little bit more than average. So for those of you, if you have conviction and, and you know, if Wolf is one of your companies, then, it, you know, they're down almost 44% from their recent highs. And, and... You know, that's not wildly different than a lot of the other companies, but it's a little more opportunity, right? If I go to Marathon, which is the big one, they're down, you know, from the top of this candle wick, they're down 43%. Right 
Raya is down 37%. Bitfarms, just quickly doing some of these. Bitfarms is down 42%. So, you know, it depends which one you have conviction in. A lot of the Bitcoin miners, like we've been talking about and tracking, you know, we do a, a, a weekly update on the channel of what all the Bitcoin miners did. And, you know, this is week 12 of the Bitcoin miners struggling. And you'll see there's been a lot of a lot of volatility here. Uh, they all look something like this. You know, a, a top here, well, I shouldn't say like this. Bitfarms actually did take out this December, which there's only, I think, two or three that actually took out their December highs at one point and pulled back. More of them look more like, well, Marathon was one of the, I think CleanSpark, Marathon, and BitFarms are the three that took out their highs. So if I go to Riot, you'll see they didn't quite get there, but but they all look like this. A, a top up in December, a giant pullback, and then a run back up. Some of them did get to that previous high. Most of them didn't. And now a run all the way back down. So are we at the bottom yet, right? That was the first, that was the first thing that we did. That was the first poll we did. Was this the bottom? Did this mark the bottom? And you'll see the reason that we ask that is most of these companies have had this multiple day move. That's an awful line, but you'll see, you know, mo almost all these days are red, including up to and including yesterday, and then everything green today. So, you know, was this the bounce off the bottom? In Riot's case, you know, it was off of one of the lines of support. This, I think, goes back to, yeah, this was the August of 2022. All the Bitcoin miners hit a local high in August of 2022. So there's been some support between $9.50 and $10.50 for Riot. So that's why I bought some Riot yesterday, right? It bounced right off of this line. So under 11, I was, was one of my targets to buy some more Riot. So that was my plan. I did my plan and we'll see what happens. So I don't know if this is the bottom or not. It would be the bottom if they didn't have to keep raising money. But I think because they need to raise money, it's not the bottom. Right. right. I mean, Riot has a $750 million at the market shelf offering. So there is potentially a lot of dilution to come. Here's what Riot needs to do, in my opinion, in the next 100 days. They need to get some of the sex of hash online, and they need to start in improving on their... Bitcoin mining efficiency. If we start to see those two things happening, even the dilution that's ahead, I do think it'll absorb that and start to make a move to the upside if they can start to operationally perform better. And of course, obviously, that's predicated on Bitcoin, uh, you know, not having a big pullback in the middle. But you can see that these don't always, in the short term, in the long term, there's a huge correlation between Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. In the short term, they can diverge in major ways, as they have over the last couple of months. And as they did the opposite way today, this is a rare day where, you know, Bitcoin down, Bitcoin miners up. The reverse has been true for quite some time. The more you zoom out, the more uh, they tend to trade, you know, very highly correlated. But there are times, we talked about it, 14 weeks last year, they, that correlation broke, and now we're almost, you know, 12 weeks this year into a similar situation. So we got opposing viewpoints. Bitfarm's terminally under $5. That from JD. JD, thanks for being a member. And then Kay, thank you for being a member. Kay said people will regret not being in Bitfarm's. So... You know, that's the that's the never ending battle and only time will tell. Sour Mountain Gaming said I've been spending some of my wife's salary in miners. Am I a bad person? We don't think you're a bad person. I know I'm getting ready to put more powder in. You're getting ready to jump put in? More yeah, I'm scared, but whatever. <laughs> so we had this you know we had this 
giant run up near the end of the day and then going into the close it came back down but we've been we bottomed out today like i said somewhere around 655 so remember i mean we were at 73,500 within the last 48 hours so that is a big pullback i'm going to go to the one day which is not that that's the one week for some reason So you can see, I mean, we got to, you know, let's look exactly what it is. Let me get out of this mode. So this, the peak here was 73,835 yesterday. So down to today's low, that was over 11% move to the downside in this two, inside of these two daily candles so we're off the bottom for now i was looking to see and we've got two hours left we're just we're just under sixty-eight thousand. so my hope for today this morning when i woke up and saw things way down was could we rally and get back and hold you know once we broke this line can we hold this line here at sixty-nine thousand or above which was the high from the previous cycle back in November of 2021. So I did think that would be a little more of a bullish signal if we could hold that line where we got two hours left to have a little rally. Now, we were two hours ago, we were above that line. In fact, we got above 70,000 and then immediately pulled back. If I go back to the 15 minute, you can see, you know, in this, this is 45 minutes. These three, these are 15 minute candles. It looks like, oh, we broke out of 69. We're way above. Looks like we're good to close. But, you know, as things do with Bitcoin, it moves so quickly. Now we're back down, you know, just under 68,000. And again, I don't think it means a, any kind of uh, shift in, in, in the overall scheme of things. It would just be a little more bullish if we finished the day above 69,000. Let me get back to the one day. This is a Batman or, you know, you could argue on the RSI. You've got a head and shoulders going here. This is the left and the right, and then this is the head. And so, you know, if this is the neckline, we're getting ready to break potentially below that. And if we do, you know, is that the pullback? Are we going to get maybe a full 20% pullback? In these times where it's a bull market like this, oftentimes we can bounce off of the 50 day. Or sorry, the 50 on the daily RSI. We don't necessarily always have to go all the way down to a full reset down to 30 or below. With Bitcoin, on the daily RSI typically, and you'll see this purple shaded area is the default, 30 is considered oversold, 70 is considered overbought. I personally, for cryptocurrency, consider 80 overbought. It can even run past that. And, you know, sometimes it does bounce down into the low 20s when it gets oversold. However, when we're in these bull, super bull markets, it can bounce off of 50 and run back up. So I expect because of the ETF still being early on, there's still a lot of buying pressure out there. So we're going to see where where we go. Today is just one day. Well, I guess counting yesterday, we are now two red days. We got two red candles. But, but in yesterday's red candle, we did hit a new all-time high for Bitcoin yesterday. So... You know, that's something to keep in perspective as we look at where we are and where we're going. What are you thinking, George? I'm trying not to think. A <laughs> couple more things going on in the news. El Salvador has thousands more Bitcoin than previously known. So I just highlighted El Salvador moved more than 5,000 Bitcoin into a cold wallet this week. The disclosure by President, this person, nearly doubles the country's known stash of the digital asset. So there's buyers all over the place, and El Salvador is the blueprint. 
right? Are more countries going to follow along? That is not insignificant. 5,000 Bitcoin. You know, I know we're used to these giant numbers looking at the ETFs and, and looking at MicroStrategy that, you know, buys 12,000 Bitcoin, you know, every time they turn around. But, but 5,000 Bitcoin is a lot of Bitcoin. And I'm just going to go back to if we went to. The so, Tom, if you hold a Bitcoin, can't they create their own like, um, what is it called? Oracle? Their own node, like an XRP that's a node. Can't they create their own node and do verification? Why doesn't MicroStrategy do that? Or are they lending theirs to um, Mara? Why doesn't micro? Well, Bitcoin does not work like. Remember, it's proof of work. So. Oh yeah. Well, need to talk. Get that switched. No. <laughs> That's the, we do not. We do not want Bitcoin to switch away from proof of work. Or I'll rephrase that. I don't want to move away from proof of work. Just to take a look, we talked about the buying pressure, and I showed this earlier, but even not of the fact that Grayscale continues. It took it had a little one-day reprieve a couple of days ago where it had $79 million in outflow, but it's doing a quarter of a billion dollars in outflow a day. In the week before this, this is the last two weeks. The week before this, it was doing a half a billion a day. So, you know, $11.5 billion of outflow since this went from uh, a trust to a spot ETF. Despite that, you know, we're at $12 trillion of net inflow. I'm sorry, billion dollars. Don't get, don't get carried away. And on Tuesday, we had the first ever $1 billion day of net inflows. So there will be more of those to come. By the way, this $683 million the next day, that's the second best day of inflows in the history of the spot ETFs. So, you know, it's not like this is waning off and we're done. This is only getting started. And I want to show you guys an article. And then maybe, George, you can do a poll because I'll bias. Well, nobody listens to me anyway, so it doesn't bias you anything. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think this statement is that I'm about to show you is totally ridiculous. I'll let you guys vote and you can tell me I'm wrong, which often happens. After I get through saying something's dumb, everybody disagrees with me. So let's see if that happens again. Ether ETFs could be bigger than the Bitcoin ETFs. This from Van Eck. The issuer of Van Eck Bitcoin Trust this week dropped its management fee to zero for a limited time. So they're trying to drum up more. Uh, let me see if I can find it. From a... From a market perspective, part of me believes that the market size for a spot ETH ETF is potentially as big, if not bigger, than the spot Bitcoin ETFs, said Vanek Portfolio Manager. I'll try this one. I butcher every name. Pranik. Uh, Kanad? My apologies to that individual for butchering their name. So, okay. So, poll. Go ahead. Uh, you want to put put it up, or you want me to do it? I mean, will I'm doing the, nothing. Will the Ethereum, if they even happen, by the way, will the Ethereum ETFs be as big as the Bitcoin ETFs? This person at Van Eck is arguing potentially it's going to be bigger than the than the Bitcoin ETFs. Tom, you doing that one, or you want me to do it? I just did it. Ah, well, I I good. could see I I I I could see it happening. Will the will the ETH ETFs be as big as the Bitcoin ETFs? I think that could happen. So I'm not going to say anything until the poll's over, and then we'll see what you guys think. Well, and what type of time period are we talking? Right out of the gate, five years, ten years. 
I'll, you guys can pick any time frame you want. <laughs> How about that? At any point just... from now until the end of time are the Ethereum ETFs. Most specifically, I would say, you know, in the first 90 days. Okay. So I'll say this while you guys are voting. The Bitcoin, two of the Bitcoin ETFs are the two most successful ETFs in the history of all ETFs. So bear that in mind as you're voting. Is Ethereum going to be even better than that? The Bitcoin ETFs are doing something, you know, in the neighborhood of, you know, 50 or 100x what the gold ETFs did in the first couple of months. So I am still skeptical. I did not bring this article up, but there was an article today. There are two uh, people in Congress that have gone to the SEC and said, do not approve any more really? crypto ETFs at all. They are uh, dangerous to the consumer. They're bad, yada, 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 yada. So when they say any, they're talking about the Ethereum ETFs, which are up uh, for final one of which is up one one or two, I think, are up in May. So which is why a lot of people are pointing to May as a potential approval for the Ethereum spot ETFs. I have been very, very skeptical of that, but I tend to be overly skeptical. So, you know, I, I was still right up until all signs were pointing to the, the Bitcoin spot ETFs being approved. And and I was skeptical right up until the last minute. So I'm even more skeptical of the Ethereum ETFs being approved this quickly after the Bitcoin ETFs. But it could be. And if it is, you know, it could be this May. And I mean, that's only a couple of months away. So we could be a couple of months away from Ethereum spot ETFs. How many people have even heard of Ethereum? <laughs> this is my point. It's like it's for people in the cryptocurrency universe, you know, we're all very uh, aware of Ethereum. And if we go, I'll go to the list. I mean, you can see there's really two cryptocurrencies and then all the rest of the cryptocurrencies. And the reason that I say that is you got Bitcoin at $1.3 billion market cap. You've got Ethereum in a distant second. Billion? But still, or sorry, trillion? Sorry. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> $1.3 trillion market cap. You got Ethereum in a distant second, but still very significant. 438 now just ticked to $441 billion. So approaching a half a trillion dollars. I mean, you, that cannot be dismissed. That is a gigantic market cap but then you know you've got a stable coin tether's now over a hundred billion dollars but that's not really a cryptocurrency it's a stable coin and then in third place so you drop off from 441 billion down to 88 billion dollars that's fourth place solana's in fifth place at just under 80 billion there is a big narrative that Solana's going to flip ethereum sometime you know sooner than later i find that very hard to believe and then you've got xrp in sixth place less than half of the fifth place at $34 billion. So you can see this falls off a cliff quickly. So when I say there's really these two cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum, make up the vast majority of the entire market cap of the entire cryptocurrency universe. Right? That's about 1.8 out of the $2.8 trillion. So, you know, that's that's a... That's a majority. The other thing while we're looking at that, well, first, of, not, not first, but once again, I'll ask everybody if you would be so kind as to please smash the like button. It is much appreciated. Uh, I want to look at a couple of things. We just had a difficulty level increase. 
yesterday. So we had one reprieve. On February 2nd, the Bitcoin network difficulty level went up 7.33%. That is a giant move to the upside. And then the very next one on February 15th went up 8.24%. So February was brutal. Then we got a little bit of a reprieve. On February 29th, we did move down 2.9%. But now, here we are on March 14th, just under 5.8% increase. So, you know, the network difficulty continues to grow going into the halving. I mean, this number is just gigantic. If we go back a year in time... So if we go back to, we'll go back, you know, 15 months ago, the beginning of January 2nd, this was at 34 trillion. It's now at 84 trillion, 14 and a half months later. So the difficulty level has increased dramatically. So, right, that makes it that much harder to mine a Bitcoin. Now, the reward's about to get cut in half in just over one month from now. Having said that, Bitcoin has much more than doubled in that period of time. So, there is some balancing to that, and that's part of the reason why Bitcoin tends to run up after the halving. Just the economics of it, from a mining standpoint, uh, you know, there's, there's pressure for Bitcoin to run. The supply, the daily supply of new Bitcoin is cut in half. So, you know, and at the same time, we know the demand has increased massively due to these ETFs. And again, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. So we may see, we might see in May and June, if, if an Ethereum ETF gets approved or several, there may be a short period of time if those run. 25% so far think the Ethereum ETFs are going to be bigger than the Bitcoin ETFs. Well, I have to ask myself, is that going to steal some of the buying pressure or the demand from Bitcoin if that's the case? So maybe is that when we're going to get one of our you know, pullbacks that we've been kind of waiting for and are, in some regards, long overdue? And I'm not rooting for a pullback, but it is a part of the process and, you know, sometimes when you're th this far overdue, any catalyst will do. So we're rallying, but can we get to 69,000 in the next two hours is the question and close this daily candle and hold. You know, I'll go back to the one day. I'm just looking to hold this line, which was the high from the previous cycle back in 2021. Let's see if I got anything else we haven't talked about here. Oh, we did not mention. So Bitfarms on Monday did put out a press release. They purchased some more Bitcoin miners. So Bit, Bit, Bitfarms purchases additional miners to reach 21 exahash in 2024. So they were they were already targeting 21 exahash, but what they were going to do was try and repurpose some of their older, less efficient machines to get from 17 to 21 exahash. Instead, they're going to sell those machines and buy these latest and greatest machines, which I support. I think this is a good plan. It's one of the reasons... They put out an at-the-market shelf offering. Now, you know, four exahash of, of mining machines is going to use just a small portion of that at-the-market offering. They're paying $17.50 a terahash, so still a good price. Uh, 14 a, a terahash for the T21s, so that's a great price. That's been the going rate. So one of the things... And, and one of the reasons I'm so bullish on what BitFarms has done is they're replacing a significant portion of their fleet. So they're going from 6.5 exahash to 21 exahash. That is the plan in the year 2024. So 
that's more than a triple in exahash and they're replacing a lot of their existing machines so they're going to become a much bigger much more efficient bitcoin mining company you know i think a lot of these companies what they're trying to do is instead of live in a world where at the having all of a sudden they're going to be mining a lot less bitcoin i think these companies are trying to get themselves in a position by the end of the year so that they're mining the same amount of bitcoin that they were you know prior to the having only at what hopefully will be much higher prices. So I think that's the concept with these companies that you see making these big, big purchases and having these big growth plans. And BitFarms is not alone. They are just happened to put out a press release this week as to some additional purchases. So again, by the end of this year, they expect to be at 21 exahash and, you know, they... And they've got growth all along the way. So let me see if I can find this. I think I have their had their chart here. Aha. Nope, that's Clean Spark, not Bit Farms. I got Clean Spark. So so while we're at it, here's Clean Sparks. This is their latest and greatest presentation. So you can see by the second half of 2024, Clean Spark's targeting 32 exahash, right? As of the time they did this, they were at 12.5 exahash. We know they're already at 16. By the end of the, the first half of 2024, they expect to get to 20, and then 32 by the end of the year, and then 50 next year. So that's the plan for CleanSpark. So this is what I'm saying. A lot of these companies have big growth plans. One of the things I didn't like, so as I went through all this stuff from Core Scientific, and this is not the end of the world, and there are people that have older fleets than this, but in in their presentation, they talk about, they give a breakdown of the machines that they have. And remember, they have hundreds of, close to 200,000 self-mining machines. If you look at this, 71% of these are the S19J Pros, which are just under 30 joules of terahash. 13% are the S19s, which are 34 joules per terahash so that's 84 percent of their fleet are these older machines now these aren't the machines that are getting retired across the network right there's a lot of machines at 35 40 or more than 40 joules per terahash those will all be gone at the having and that's why a lot of people expect you know at or around the having at least for a short period of time the the global hash rate will probably go down as those machines just become so unprofitable but when I look at this, even if I compare them to, you know, Marathon, which they're very competitive from a number of Bitcoin mined over the last couple of months, most of Marathon's fleet are these right here, the S19J XPs, which are 21 and a half joules a terahash. So that's pretty significant difference from 29 and a half down to 21 and a half. So you know, while they can still continue to use all the machine these machines, and they will be adding more. These are by no means the most efficient machines out there. So, you know, even comparing them to uh, BitFarms that we just looked at, most of BitFarms machines are going to be the S21s, which are even less joules per terahash than this. So, and I'm not saying Core, I, I still think Core will be one of the winners. I think they're going to mine a lot of Bitcoin. I think they're, they're going to make a lot of money. I just... There's an awful lot of information to digest. Again, there's multiple warrants. Let me just quickly show you one of the warrants that I'm looking at. So this was up almost 12, now 15, 16% today. So boy, did I like this a lot better yesterday than I do today. So this was at $2. Now it's at $2.37. I can't remember what the strike point is, but somewhere in the $8 range, essentially these are just convertible for a share of stock. So, for and, and they don't expire until somewhere around 2029, I think. So, you know, for what was yesterday, $2.01, but even right now up all this for $2.37, you stand a chance of converting a share of stock at 8 or $9. You know, and you don't have to buy it at that point. I think the stri the the it's a penny. So, you know, these are interesting to me. But Core Scientific has to succeed for these to ever get into the money and be worth something.
But I do think Core Scientific will succeed. That's my opinion. I know it's an awful lot of information to go through, and I'm still really not 100% comfortable with what's going on here, but they do seem to have a lot of good stuff going on. They have a massive amount of debt, but uh, most of that debt, the principal isn't due until 2028 and 2029, so that was a part of the Chapter 11 restructuring. They pushed that. They still have over $600 million in debt, but they pushed it way out. Now, their interest is still going to be, you know, 40 million or 50 million a year, whatever it is. So, you know, that hurts. But it's that that principle, you know, most of that is pushed way out, even past the next having or around the next having, I guess. I got a funny taste in my mouth. <laughs> Can you describe this taste? <laughs> it's keto breath. Do you know what keto breath is? I I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> keto. Will the ETH will the ETH ETF be bigger than the Bitcoin ETF? So we'll end this one. Twenty seven percent think yes, the Ethereum ETF is gonna be even bigger than the Bitcoin spot ETFs which have basically broken every record ever set by an ETF by a mile. So if Ethereum does even better than that, I guess I, I would, should consider buying my question, some Ethereum. My question would be, is it going to be better than gold? That's the question I want to know. There's no way it's going to be better than Bitcoin. But I, is it going to be better than gold? I, I think, yeah, I think, I think it will decimate. If you look at in the first 12 months of what the gold ETFs did versus what an Ethereum ETF will do if it's approved, I think the Ethereum ETF will destroy what the gold ETF did. Yeah, but that's a better, but that's a better, you know, pull. Is what I'm saying. See what I'm saying? Bitcoin's just been around too long. It's too much more maturity. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a I think it's wildly unrealistic to think that the Ethereum ETFs are going to have more. Now, the one thing that you could argue as well with with Bitcoin, there was the grayscale that had massive outflows every day. So yeah. but even still, even with those outflows, the you know, the. Fidelity and uh, BlackRock's ETFs just are just they destroyed anything any thing anybody else has ever done i just want to let wes k know the c-o-r-z-z -Z, that's not the over-the-counter ticker that is now their warrant they have a c-o-r-z-w warrant and a c-o-r-z-z -Z warrant that were issued when <laughs> the company came out of chapter 11 c-o-r-z-q was their over-the-counter <laughs> ticker We're at 68,400, by the way. That 69,000 is not, you know, that that's not out of reach. We still have over an hour and a half to get to the daily candle closing. So that's what I'm going to be looking for tonight. Can we close above that 69,000? Again, I don't, I don't think it's make or break. It's not the end of the world either way. But it would be nice to hold that. You know, if we retest that, the more times we retest that line of support on the daily candle and it holds the better not there's no guarantees either way and you know if it closes a little bit below it today and then closes above it tomorrow that's probably basically the same thing so we'll have to see what happens Edmund wants to bring back the cow I don't know what that means but you don't my face since my face isn't up he said bring oh. back the cow <laughs> is your face still not how come i can see you uh, it's okay tom don't, don't it's get, it got messed up it's okay don't get sidetracked again I, oh i'm down what am i down tom like 14 pounds something like that yes i i found a new i did i'm doing fast metabolism diet fast metabolism diet i like it it's a great diet it's not really a diet it's just Change what you can eat. It's a life choice, Sam. <laughs> I, 
I support your diet. I am also on a diet. I'm, I can't help but be dumbfounded that everybody can't see you right now. My screen shows. Don't that worry you're about up. it. I, Don't I, worry about it. <laughs> it just goes to show that I am technologically impaired, Thanks. apparently. Thanks, Ross. No, it just. I just. I, I looked at myself and I said, I look like a cow. And then I said, you know what? I need to not be a cow anymore. <laughs> Somebody said fish, fish, fish. Do you think that which miner right now is the best value? Is it still Clean Spark because they pulled way back? Or no? Clean Spark still outrun everybody by a mile over the last, you know, three months. It's not even close. So Yeah, but I mean they had a nice little pullback. Even with that pullback, they're still in first place by a mile. So I'm, yeah, not saying, we, I, I'm not saying they're not the best. It's a tough call, right? They're my highest conviction miner, so, and I do think they're going to a price that's a lot higher than that. But I think there's a bunch of miners. This has been a pretty healthy pullback for you know most of the Bitcoin miners. So what, whichever one that you have conviction in, you know that you're looking to open a position in or add to your position in or add to your watch list. You know, there's been all of these Bitcoin miners. I think CleanSpark is the only Bitcoin miner that's even green in the last 90 days. So, wow. you know, there's buying opportunities if you think. It, it just seems like once a stock gets hot, that's the one you stay with. You know what I mean? There's absolute truth to that, right? Momentum is real. Look at we have some great examples of that when, you know, I, I can kick myself. It was maybe five or six. I lose track of time now. But on a Friday live stream, when NVIDIA hit 400, I said two things. One, this is insane. It's, you know, it had run up so much it was ridiculous. And then I followed that by saying, I still think it's an unbelievable buying opportunity right now. I did not buy it. And it was at 900 a few days ago. So, you know, to your point, that's momentum. Stick with the winners. So right. that, I mean, that can be a strategy and it can be real. There's no doubt about it. I was thinking about doing a channel, Ross, since in congrats hitting 50, everything changes at 50. I'm not going to lie. Don't you agree, Tom? Everything slows down and oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I'm on a diet and it's a different experience. Losing yeah. weight used to be like, uh, you know, you just yeah. decide to do it and it's done. And well, not anymore. Yeah, I'm 54 and Tom's 55. He's an oldie. <laughs> I'll tell you what a cop once told me when he pulled me over in New York. 55 saves lives. <laughs> what was I going to say? Yeah, so I started carnivore, and then I just didn't do well with carnivore. Did not do well with carnivore. It tore me up. Dude, it's already um, 630 or 624. Yeah, I guess it's that time. This seemed to fly by for yeah, some it did. reason. But I will tell you, we're closing on one, two, the last seven candles, six of them are green. We're taking a run at this 69,000 by the, the end of the day. The five o'clock buy is real. The pump is real. That's right. So let's see if we can do that. Any other, any parting thoughts, George, for everybody as they go into no. their weekend? No, just be, be <laughs> nice and be happy. That's good advice, everybody. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Uh, special thanks to all the members for being a great. member. M members, uh, 1 o'clock tomorrow, our chat on the weekend. And, by the way, they really got into a, um, um, a strategy of what they're going to talk about and, like, what things they want to buy. And it's real interesting now. It's getting more technical. It's pretty cool. So this is for our members only, the Saturday conversation in yeah. the Discord. So anybody Hopefully who's interested welcome. in being a member, 
uh, it's only five dollars a month. You can join. Uh, you hit the subs or the join button, I think, on YouTube. So it's right next to the subscribe. So you're all welcome to do that. And if you're not, if you have, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. We got over twenty thousand subscribers. We're starting to run a little bit again, George. So I think yeah, twenty thousand four hundred, Tom. Interest. There's interest out there in Bitcoin. There's interest out there in the Bitcoin miners. There should be with Bitcoin hovering around its all-time high. So if not now, when? Just so you know, everybody, I'm waving right now. I'm waving goodbye. I apologize, everybody. I don't know why you can't see George. It's my technological error. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had a good day investing today and a good week today. Go Bitcoin. Uh, Thanks again and for the members uh, tomorrow and then, of course, Tuesday members only live stream as well. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night.